Okay, so we talk a lot of high school basketball in the Big Apple on this show, and there's been so much drama going around the PSAL playoffs and student-athlete eligibility that I wanted to discuss what exactly is going on right now. Last week, the PSAL Class 4A title game was canceled, and we're going to discuss it all with the man who broke the news, a reporter for News 12 and sports reporter for Fox News Headlines 24-7. My guy, Greg Thompson. Greg, what's up, man? Thanks. What's going on? Only talk about the uh, craziest seven days we've seen since Craig David wrote a song. <laughs> look, look, I love the Craig David reference. I love uh, this is you. I had to this fill is, you in. This, this is why Greg is my guy. We've known each other for years, worked together at News 12. Good to have you here to talk about this. And it was a crazy seven days. Greg, and look, there's a lot that went on in this past week. Can you explain to the people how we got to this? OK, the class four title A game, class four A game title game, excuse me, between Eagle Academy Two, South Shore High School canceled last Friday. As I mentioned, how did we get here? Yeah, as we said it's been a crazy seven days, but it actually kind of goes back a little before that, depending on how much time we got settling boys and girls story time here. So <laughs> it goes back. New York City High School basketball, it's sort of situated a little bit like the NCAA tournament. You have your regular season, then instead of your conference tournaments, you have your borough tournaments, and then you get into your citywide tournament. So Jefferson out of East New York, they play their regular season. They are in the Brooklyn Borough Tournament. They're going along there. They get busted for having an, an ineligible player. So deal with that. They take some forfeits. They get tossed out of the Brooklyn Borough Tournament. They take their lumps there. They get penalized. They go through that. They figure, all right, that's done with. They have a little bit of a worse seed in the citywide tournament, but, and I've seen it, they have text messages saying, that's done, you're in the clear now, you are good to go for the city tournament. So they're like, all right, that was not ideal, but we move on, the city title is the goal, not the Brooklyn Borough title. So go on. They play their opening round game in the city playoffs. They play their quarterfinal game in the city playoffs. They are on to the semifinals. They are supposed to play the semifinal game on Saturday against South Shore. Friday night, the emails came a little before dinner time, maybe dinner time, depending on when you eat, 5, 6 p.m. We get emails from the league. Hey, we're checking out some of your players again. Hey, please provide any details you have. They end up finding out that five different Jefferson players who were ineligible because of either academics or because of attendance played in 13 regular season and then two borough playoff games when they shouldn't have. So based on PSAL rules, if you have an ineligible player in a game, that game's a forfeit. So go back. Those 13 regular season games, all forfeits. Right. So there's kind of the confusion. They said, I thought we were good. You said we were good for the, for the city tournament. It's not about that. Because those regular season games were forfeits, those are all losses. They say Jefferson shouldn't have even qualified for the city tournament to begin with. So they're kicked out. They're gone. No Jefferson. Parents are confused. Coaches are confused. Players are confused. They say this is unfair. How can this happen? We're being targeted. We're missing out on opportunities. Perhaps, but they're gone. PSL, right. PSL figures since you guys aren't there and you shouldn't have even been in the city tournament to begin with, we got to replay those games. So they say that first round game against Stevenson from the Bronx. That's now a forfeit win for Stevenson. The quarterfinal game against Eagle Academy from the Bronx. We're going to replay that. So they do that on the Sunday. Eagle Academy from the Bronx wins. So, okay, the semifinal game that was supposed to be Saturday, we're going to play that during the week against South Shore. Then things start coming out that maybe that's not going to happen. Turns out that after all this happened with Jefferson, the PSAL decided we're going to audit all of the remaining teams. So at that point, that was Eagle Academy from the Bronx, that was South Shore, and that was Eagle Academy 2 from Brooklyn, which won their semifinal game, no issues there. So they audit those three games. They find... Eagle Academy from the Bronx had an ineligible player. Mm -hmm. Eagle Academy Bronx, you're gone. So, okay, we're, you know, we're done replaying now. We're not doing this anymore. South Shore, you're on to finals. South Shore, Eagle Academy from Brooklyn, you guys will play in the championship game on Friday. We thought that should have been it. They're going to play their game. It's going to be a great event, despite all the drama. Friday, St. John's University. Fans are going to be there. Great event for Brooklyn. There's still text going on. There's still social media chatter that... Why is South Shore in the clear now? South Shore might have an ineligible player. South Shore is denying this. South Shore is saying we got audited earlier in the months. South Shore is saying we got audited when they went back through all the remaining teams. Still, I'm getting text. Hey, South Shore has a bad player. South Shore has a bad player. Sort of going, there's a lot of noise going. People are saying, we're sending this into the league. We're sending this to DOE. And by bad player, you mean ineligible. Just want to be clear for the people, ineligible Correct, player. Correct, an ineligible right. player because of age restrictions. Right. 
it gets to the point where it's Friday morning, nothing's come out. We're like, if something was going to happen, it would have happened by now. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out around, I don't know, 11 a.m., noonish on Friday, the news comes out. The championship game has been canceled. They decided that South Shore did indeed have someone who did not meet the age requirements. They had an, el an, an eligible player who had been playing. They're out. No championship game. One of the premier events in New York City, in New York City sports. Yeah. Canceled, not happening. Just like that. I feel like you were exhausted from having to explain all that to us because it is a lot. I think what people are going to listen to in that explanation and hear from you, Greg, is that, okay, when you got to the point where it was so close and we were getting to the semis, it seems like, why did they go and re-audit? You know, why did they decide to re-audit all of those teams? It seems to me, and this is just me projecting what I think I might know on some of this, some people complained for some other schools. Some schools might not have liked it, you know, or known that there was some information. It seems like there's a lot of, you know, there's a game behind the game. Is what I'm saying. Right. I mean, if nothing else, the timing of everything here has been much part of an issue. You have Jefferson, which, again, played multiple city, ch city playoff games and then found out, oh, you shouldn't have even been here. Right. You had games being replayed and then a team kicked out. You had all those what supposedly happened. And then on the day of the championship, they decide one of those teams was ineligible. So if nothing else, even if all of the things that the audits found were correct, the timing and the way they were done just made it worse because there was more confusion, these last minute things happening where you almost have ping pong with the players and coaches' feelings where you think you're in the clear, you think everything's okay, just to be told, no, it actually wasn't and it never should have been. Right. And I think that's the thing that is so disheartening for the kids, the students who I'm talking about, student athletes who are playing, the coaches who put a lot of work to get into this point, and obviously the families and the fans as well, too. But, Greg, I think when you look at what went down, right, it seems like there are a lot of adults at fault here because we're talking about student athletes here. Who is to blame for there not being a 2024 Class 4A PSAL champion in basketball? There's going to be a lot of finger pointing here. Nobody likes to take accountability in life. And especially here when it comes to adults, when it comes to kids. And I'm sure it can go around. Again, we can talk about the timing of when the PSAL did it. We can talk about just how thorough these audits really were if they didn't find some of these things. At the end of the day, the PSAL and the DOE have been very clear from both conversations I've had with them and the official statements they've put out. They say it is on the athletic directors of these schools to maintain eligibility. That's where they put it. Again, can you say it's a little bit on the players to make sure you're going to class and make sure you're attending schools? Is it on the coaches to you know, know who's right for your team and who isn't? Is it on the parents, whoever's bringing up these kids, whoever their caregivers are at home, to make sure they're doing what they need to? Sure, but at the end of the day, as far as the PSAL and the DOE is concerned, it's on the athletic directors. Now, again, I think there's a little bit of PSAL and DOE blame that has to go in here also, because you're doing these audits. You should have found these things earlier, especially when, they, when these playoffs started. This isn't football where there's, you know, 50 people on a team. This is basketball. There's 10, 12, especially as we get into the playoffs. Now, again, PSAL, you're underfunded, you're understaffed. Maybe you don't have the people who can do this. But to go through it for some of these things that are this blatant, you can find attendance, you can find grades, you can find birthdays. Maybe you should have found these things. I think there's a little bit of that going on here, and they're trying to change the culture. Audits hadn't happened since COVID. They have the right to do these randomly. That hadn't happened since 2020. They said in the statement, this hadn't happened in four years. I think there was maybe a little bit of a whip last year because maybe schools weren't ready for it, and they maybe thought, okay, this is going to happen. We can be a little fast and loose. Maybe you had an excuse during COVID. There's not an excuse now. Maybe you should have known a little bit more. Maybe the PSAL could have been a little more thorough and a little bit more proactive here. So, yes, they're going to say it's the ADs, but maybe they could have done a little more on their side also. Right, and as a former PSAL athlete myself, I know, yes, ADs are checking that. They are checking eligibility. Well, they're supposed to. <laughs> like, I'm sure Clara Barton was all dotting but, their eyes, crossing yeah. their teeth. Well, I hope so. I'm a proud Panther. I hope that they were. And usually they were with those things, but you're right. The I think I love that you brought up the point that, okay, this might go further because this is on the DOE and the PSAL. If they're going to do audits, when they're going to do it to catch them, which brings me to the next thing here, Greg, because... I think people looking at this, and they'll be disappointed at what happened with this Class 4A championship game. How big of an issue is this? Is student-athlete eligibility in NYC public schools? And does there need to be a stricter enforcement of the eligibility rules and accountability? You said nobody likes to take it. For schools who then break the rules. Because if this is, the, is this the only punishment? Is that enough? Or is there more that needs to be done going forward? Yeah, if you look at the statement that 
again, I first had yesterday from the DOE and was given to us, they said that more could be coming. They said they wouldn't hesitate to punish people more if they found out that adults were to blame here. They've, they said they've referred each of these cases to the city's special commissioner of investigation, which is no small matter. They're serious about this. Now, they've also reinstituted the eligibility office, which has had kind of lain dormant and hadn't been there for the PSAL. That's an issue. As far as how prevalent it is, I can't give you a number. I don't know. Obviously, the perception right now in the PSAL is that if you're not cheating, you're not trying. When you see that they ordered it and you had, what, two of the last three, three of the last four, however you want to do the final math there, ended up being ineligible. That's bad. So you wonder how more there is. You wonder if there's a school that was by the books and if they lost a game, they wonder if that was all fair, if maybe they should have been bending the rules. From the PSL point of view in the DOE, the way it's supposed to be in their thing is the cliche, it's student before athlete and student athlete. Sports are supposed to be a way to get kids to class. You have these requirements because that's a reward. You can only play in these games if you have this amount of attendance, if your grades are this high, if you're taking this number of core courses. If you're not following those requirements, then what's the point of sports? This is supposed to be a way, they love to say those numbers. Oh, student athletes have these grades. Are this more likely to graduate? Are this more likely to be on honor roll? Because you have to do these things. So I think in the DOE's point of view, you're losing the entire point of having sports. Yes, it's a way for kids to get to college. Yes, it's a way for kids to be seen and recognized. That's a small percentage, especially when you go across the entire PSAL, the entire DOE. Yes, small term, some kids are missing out on it because this is when you get seen, when you get into the semifinals and the finals of the city basketball tournament. But overall, for most kids, the point of sports in the DOE's eye is to give them a reason to go to school and to do well in school. So they see this, and David Banks, the commissioner, or the ch school chancellor, he sees this as a major issue, and I, and I think he's showing this right how now by taking actions like this. Yeah, and that leads me to what I wanted to talk to you about next, because you mentioned David Banks, the DOE chancellor. We saw a statement from him uh, that came out. What did you make of what he said? Because I thought it was that he's very serious. Now, actions speak louder than words. These are words right now. Mm -hmm. Do you believe, with the words that we saw from David Banks in his statement, that there will be any meaningful change to PSL sports in the near future? We'll see. So we mentioned David Banks. We mentioned Danny Harris, who's the new senior executive director of the PSL. This is his first full school year in charge. They've talked about trying to change the culture. And you talk about actions. This is a big one. This is the premier event in New York City high school sports. Apologies to the Catholic League. This is when you talk to the PSL. Uh, Connie Hawkins, the Lenny Wilkins, the Stefan Marbury, the, the Lance Stevenson, the more recently the Isaiah Whiteheads, the Shimori Ponds, uh, the Kadari Richmonds, maybe, who have played and won state championships. And the joke is it's always all about basketball. They don't even care about football. They don't care about it. It's all about basketball. You just canceled the biggest event you have. Now, David Banks didn't mention in his statement, but he did kick out Eagle Academy Bronx. David Banks, before he was a chancellor, he was the founder of the Eagle Academy schools. Again, he didn't mention them in his statement when he mentioned Jefferson and South Shore, but he did kick out one of his own schools here. These, uh, whatever the word you want to use, stones, onions, these are big moves that take it. Danny Harris has been around the PSAL basketball for a while. He knows how this is going to play in Brooklyn. These are big time moves that you don't do unless you're serious about changing the culture. Will there be more punishments to send a message? I don't know. I think a pretty strong message has been sent. I don't know if you need to be going after people's jobs. I would never advocate for someone losing their job, you know, regardless of how serious you are about, you know, putting kids opportunities and, and, and adults going for that. I, I think both adults and kids would have benefited here. We don't need to get into that. The point is, this is a big swing they took. You know, they've also talked about making changes to try and be more proactive with reinstituting that eligibility office, trying to be more proactive and trying to get these audits done in a timely manner so that that timing problem is an issue because it is. Yep. You know, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Short term, we may see kids who don't want to go to New York City public schools and play sports because they think they might end up in a mess like this. They might do everything right and not get these opportunities. Short term, there is some harm. Long term, if a message is sent and they keep doing these things, doing these random audits and find out a better and more efficient way to do it, then maybe it's a first step. It's a big first step. 
we'll see what happens from here. No, you're right. The first step is you have to say something in terms of then the next step is the actions that are going to be taken to go forward. And we will see. And I think you make a fantastic point about student athletes who play basketball here in New York. If they will continue to think and say, hmm, maybe I don't want to play at a PSAL school because I don't want opportunities taken away from me because there might be some drama around it. And the drama is no good for anybody. Now, the last thing I want to talk to Greg before we get Greg here, and he's been so gracious with his time. Greg, I know you're excited about this. I was too. The PSAL and the CHSAA, they have agreed to host a postseason basketball championship event that will go down next week. Now, in that event, we're supposed to see the 4A champ in the PSAL. They were going to play the AA champ in the Catholic League. That would be Stepanak and Boogie Flan, who sat in the seat uh, here earlier this season. Here's the thing. <laughs> All right. Who should represent the PSAL as the 4A champ when there wasn't a champ because there wasn't a championship game? Yeah, it's a funny thing. You see, you go online and people are saying, oh, I guess it's Eagle Academy 2 from Brooklyn who was supposed to play South Shore in that championship game. Um, there's been nothing about them. They haven't come up in any of these audits. It's interesting when they went through these other things, when the official announcement came out on the website online from the DOE, they moved things along on the bracket. They put things up there, said forfeit win. They have not officially said Eagle Academy Brooklyn is the champion. I've asked the PSAL. I've asked the DOE. I have not gotten an answer about that. I've asked Eagle Academy Brooklyn. They said we're kind of assuming we're going to play Stepanak, but no one's told us anything. It's tough. I don't think anyone would feel great about them being the champion here. I don't think this is how they would want to win it. But if you want to get this event going in its first year, yes, you'll have the lower levels. You'll have the girls teams playing. This is a big one. The 4A champions have Eagle Academy Brooklyn go play Stepanek. They were going to be the big underdogs regardless. Yeah. I, if it's up to me, I think reward them for the season. They are the defending PSAL champs, too. Yep. Um, they have some good names on the team. They have some Division One athletes already committed in future ones. I think it should be them. I think you should get this event played. I think it would be good for New York City basketball to have a game to talk about after all of this. No official word yet, though. I, we got to find out soon, though. We're hopefully that news comes down soon. I agree with you. I think it would be fantastic for New York City basketball. You get a true city champion crowned, if you want to say that. I think it's good. But all this stuff that we've talked about, not good for New York City basketball and the drama that happened, but hopefully good that maybe there are changes to come soon. This guy, Greg Thompson, he has been all over it, one of the best in covering local sports here in the city. And Greg, you know what? I want to say this with you here because I think it's so important. And that's why I'm glad we had this platform to talk. It is so important in the city with basketball and covering high school sports because hyper local coverage of sports is so important. It is very important. And the work you did in breaking this news, I've been a little bit out of the high school basketball world, not as plugged in as I used to be. And I had people calling me about this, right? People from all these different schools talking to me about this. And you were so on top of it and giving the news to everybody. So I want to say thank you for the work you did because you did good work. And I know it was busy. It was crazy seven days. Yeah, Work's Craig that. David. Hey, always, anytime. <laughs> if that's a silver lining here that we got a Craig David uh, reference out of this and got him up the billboard charts a couple. Hey, you know hey, what? I'm, I'm walking I'm, away happy. I'm happy for that. Check out Greg Thompson. Check out his work with News 12. Also check out his work with Fox News headlines 24-7. And thanks for joining us on this bonus interview for New York Got Game. And thanks for watching New York Gut Game. Boom shakalaka.